Well, everybody, we've got our results for the week one of the Pro Quest London season. Pro Tour London, Pro Quest, I don't know what you call it, but we have results for it. So let's talk about those results and wouldn't you know it, Aurora sits on top of the pack with 23 overall wins with Enigma right behind her. And I'll tell you the truth, I'll be honest with you, I thought Enigma was going to be the, the one at the top, but I didn't expect Aurora to be that far back from her because it's just sort of been the Aurora game almost at this point. A lot of players that I've seen talking about Aurora uh, have been doing very well at their pro quests. I think uh, everyone sort of agrees with the assessment that we put forth a few weeks ago and uh, several others did as well. I'm not claiming fame to this at all, but that Aurora is the aggro deck to beat in the current format, of course, before the uh, Dash Armory deck comes out. And uh, you know, what? It's proven true. It's proven to be the case. And if I were going to a pro quest like tomorrow, I would probably be taking Aurora myself. One, because she's really fun. Two, because she's very good. And she answers a lot of the questions that Enigma, as the quote unquote best deck in the format, asks. Of course, Enigma is the hero that basically asks all the questions. I'm going to build a board state. What are you going to do about it? I'm going to snowball that board state and kill you. What are you going to do about it? And uh, it's a lot harder to do those things if you're uh, playing against Aurora as Enigma, because Aurora can attack you on multiple different fronts. Breakpoint physical attacks, uh, you know, pings from arcane, rune chants which are pings from arcane as well uh and there's a, just a lot of like combo that you can lean into in the whole matchup spread as far as aurora is concerned uh and just pure aggression that really gives her an edge and i think it's really exciting to see a hero come out and do this well and still be relatively approachable from a new player standpoint kind of like what zen was until zen really just I don't want to say jumped off a cliff because that's really not what he did. He shot to the moon. Uh, that Zen was sort of the promised uh, easy new player hero, and he just became cracked in half when everybody started playing all of the bonds that they possibly could. So with all that understood, Aurora kind of takes that mantle, the best deck in the format, or the, I should say the best aggro deck in the format, and uh, something that is a little bit more new player friendly to grab onto. And I think that's a great spot for her to be in. I think the other important thing to note with this chart and talking about the meta is that those two heroes have the lion's share of the wins for the ProQuest week one. Going into week two, I wouldn't expect that to change very much, but look how far the drop off is from Enigma to Azalea, which when we did our give and take tier list a couple of weeks ago, I personally posited that Azalea was like one of the decks to beat in the format. Of course, I think everybody was a little bit off on KO, regardless of who you look at, but uh, Azalea was one that kind of flew under some people's radar. And when you think about it, she's an aggressive hero that has disruption that can make things awkward uh, as far as blocking and ward is concerned for Enigma, and also just take away the ability for an aggro deck to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with her, thanks to things like Red in the Ledger. But Aurora, very uniquely suited to combat that because she doesn't play non-attacks into attacks as much as you would think, and she can dance around uh, with more action points thanks to instant speed shenanigans. So she can use her hand to really make an attack still very threatening. So it's pretty cool to see Azalea there in the third spot, but she's really not that far ahead of the ones behind her as well. New Alluring Desire sitting there at nine wins, which to me actually feels a little bit high. New's pretty solid into a variety of the heroes in the meta, but the one she has to dodge is Enigma, because it does not feel good to sit down as the new player and try to play into Enigma, especially with some of the you know more advanced Enigma players starting to really uh, take off. So I was kind of surprised to see New sitting there at nine. Viscerai and Florian, uh, two Rune Blades that now have seven wins to their name on the season. I was surprised Viscerai didn't get a few more, and I was shocked that Florian got this many. Here's the thing, I've been very down on Florian in this first kind of opening outset of the meta. I very much expected Florian to be more towards the bottom of this list, if on it at all. And that's simply because I feel like he just does 
mid-range things. He does like beefy, chunky things, and I'm not sure the beefy, chunky thing is like the answer to this meta. If you can't put more pressure on the board uh, against something like an Enigma, then I don't know how you're making your way through that matchup. But the nice thing that he has going for him, and this is why I think that he's doing better than I gave him credit for, is that he can play a go-again attack into a couple of rune chants and the reaping blade and if you get to a point at the end of the game where his effect turns on then just pitching into grasp of the arc knight for two rune chants and then swinging the blade for a total of one blue pitch for that entire thing uh is incredibly efficient uh so if you get to that late game point where the enigma is just trying to sort of grind you out and outvalue you with the ward on the board she just really can't play that game anymore and if you're able to play more defensively into some of the more aggressive or disruptive decks you get to a point where you can outvalue them but there are some uh, interesting florian builds that are running around that are far more aggressive and i wonder if a couple of those wins came off the back of that other list now a hero that i I was very, I'll put it this way. I was very interested to see how Zen performed this time around because the Tiger Katsu list has beaten me up a time or two on a variety of heroes uh, in this current testing cycle that I'm going through. And I, I think everybody thought that, of course, Zen taking the step back would take an even larger step back. But the fact that is that he can still go six and seven chain links wide, and it may not have the explosive OTK potential that he did before, but he's still got some, uh, still got some legs to him. So honestly, funnily enough, I think Zen to me is in the best spot he's ever been. Not meta-wise, of course, because he's not sitting at the top, being the only deck you should play. But as far as a, a enjoyment and playability-wise, this is what I wanted Zen to be: is all like tiger ninjas and like value and million chain links. That's what I wanted. They're all a little undervalued, but they push forever. I think that's super cool. And that's kind of where he is. So uh, that might be a hero to watch out for, especially if your meta, and all this day is tailor-made to their meta, but if your meta is heavily influenced by Enigma, then Zen is a really good response to that. Sir Bolton is a little shocking to me as well. I think a lot of players saw what happened at the Battle Harden and said, oh yeah, he can do very aggressive things if you play it right. And I think Alex put on a show on that uh, Battle Harden that we were able to bring you. And uh, I think maybe off of the back of some of that, some of these uh, players have come out and started winning. I am blown away that two people picked up wins with Kano. Kano can do crazy things, uh, if, especially if you're not respecting it. But I feel like there's so many people right now that are so respectful of Kano, that because of that respectfulness and because of his increased fragility, thanks to the bands that have changed him, uh, he just does not have nearly the legs that you might have expected. That being said, he is still very powerful and into certain metas that are not ready for it, he can he can still just do the, the Kano thing. Kano is down here at two, probably the biggest loser of this meta. I think that's, that's fairly easy to say. Uh, Dash picked up two wins, getting closer to the Living Legend status. Leviah picked up two wins as well. And speaking of the Living Legend status, let's look at those after we talk about the last heroes listed down there. Dorinthia picked up a win. Zuri picked up a win. Prism, Awakener of Soul picked up a win. Vincent did pick up a win. Phi picked up a win, which is super interesting. And Verdance also picked up a win. All right, so here is the living leaderboard. As it stands right now, the things that I have my eye on that you should as well. First and foremost is this right here, Dash, Inventor Extraordinaire. Uh, gained two wins, therefore 10 points total, and is now 80 points away from hitting the Living Legend status and taking her Teclo Plasma Pistol with her. Uh, that only really affects Max, who's way down here and probably doesn't, I guess kind of cares because you want that weapon, but doesn't really affect the meta too much. Her moving her way out also, I would argue, doesn't really affect the meta too much. I think there's a lot of players that were trying like the, uh, the more turtle dash uh, CYB version where you're, you know, counting your blessings and trying to defend and play to the late game, uh, which is just really, really powerful in certain metas. 
but I don't know if it has the uh, capacity to go up against a an Enigma that can just kind of fast roll the board, like free roll the board and just blow you up. So I'm curious to see if her rotation out of the format actually changes much. Uh, the other thing that you should keep your eye on are these heroes right here. Enigma did gain 195 points. Now, some of those points, I believe 50 of those points, uh, were off of the back of a calling win. Uh, Pablo Pintor picked up the win on Enigma. Nevertheless, the rest of those points came from Pro Quests, and that was just week one. I expect her to do well week two. I expect the other hero right here, Aurora, to do well week two as well. These are the two biggest point getters, the two winners of this past weekend. Uh, Aurora Shooting Star getting 120 points, and then Enigma getting 145, is that correct, points? Uh, overall on this uh, ProQuest season and through some of the other tournaments around. I guess it would have to be less because uh, she won less ProQuest, so she had uh, picked up points during this season at some other point as well. Uh, probably like a, a battle harden that I just forgot about. Nevertheless, the other things to look out at besides these two biggest point getters and of course the rotation perhaps or the perceived rotation of Dash Inventor Extraordinaire are a couple of these heroes that have not moved in ages like Viserai, who's now making some serious waves on the Living Legend leaderboard. That is a, a huge move, and a lot of players were thinking, myself included, that this would be the final year for Kano's inclusion in the classic constructed metagame. That may not be the case, because he is, uh, I would say, he's definitely an underdog in the meta currently. Azalea, though, that would be one to keep your eye on. She actually may make her way out at the end of this year and uh, officially be in the Living Legend uh, format only and exclusively because uh, I do th expect her to pick up more wins this ProQuest season and uh, we'll see how close that gets her. Now, I don't know is if, if there's anything past this ProQuest season that actually grants points because she will not she will not living legend during this uh, during this ProQuest season. There are only three weeks remaining, and I do think that the moment that Dash IO hits the uh, hits the scene with her armory deck, she's gonna gobble up some points. I don't know how quickly or if it will be a major problem, but I do think that she's gonna become sort of the Aurora shooting star of the format, and Aurora and all the other aggro decks are going to have to contend with the sheer card draw and power of Dash IO. Now, if you're looking for something to play this weekend, look at your local meta. If it's full of Enigma, then consider playing Aurora because she can just push all these breakpoint damage uh, kind of chunks. Uh, it can be still very difficult. That matchup can be quite difficult. Uh, maybe look at dominated damage via Azalea if you're looking at that as well. Those were the top three heroes. If your meta is full of things like Aurora, which is a deck that can't exactly block well, you might try new Alluring Desire, but I don't know. I personally, I was kind of shocked she had the showing that she did. Uh, I don't know if my, I would put too much stock and credence into her placement in the meta currently. Uh, I, if I were sitting down to play a pro quest like tomorrow, I would either play Aurora or I would probably play Viserai. I think those two heroes have a, a unique spot in the metagame to be able to push damage and uh, like answer a lot of questions. Uh, and I don't think I would take Kano out for a spin. Um, I think there's too much hate in the meta right now for him, and uh, that coupled with his nerfs uh, and bans from the deck have definitely put him in a tough spot. So that is your week one wrap up for the metagame of this pro quest leading into Pro Tour London. If you enjoy this type of recap video, make the number go slightly higher because we like making numbers go to another number. If you like that as well, come along for the ride. Uh, we'll be here for quite a while. In fact, we've been here for almost five years just doing this for Flesh and Blood and other related games. And the, the YouTube channel has been here for eight years. So if you would like to join me on this uh, now almost nine year journey, make the number go to another number. As always, thanks for watching.